You know, this is a hot take for a ban list, but it's actually not that bad. And at this point, I'll play in any new format. Let's dive on into it, shall we? My chair is continuing to peel like a girl who just hit her teenage years, so ignore this comfy towel. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's your host with the most Avery LR32 here and destroy the ever living ban list boo boo stain off of that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher. The 1200 ladder currently sitting at 1,252 subscribers. Never thought I'd see the day. I really do appreciate all of the support, whether it's because you've donated to the channel or you're just liking the video uh, or just watching and commenting. I say just, but. I'm thankful for all of it. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Happy August 1st, actually, now that I think about it. It's going to be a fantastic month. So, uh, as we wait for, I guess, the ban list that won't be coming till September or October, I hope sooner rather than later, Worlds is this upcoming weekend, so I'm hoping we see some kind of list uh, after that, hopefully soon. But uh, Italian Yu-Gi-Oh! posted their ban list predictions and thoughts and things. And I wanted to go over it because, one, it's fun to talk about ban lists. It, you know, it's like a little Christmas season, right? And number two, it's actually a really solid list that I think a lot of people would be happy with. So starting off here uh, with the bans, they have Eradicator. Now, <laughs> I say that it's a good list, but yet I already have issues with the band and uh, some cards in the limited section. Um, you can't just ban Eradicator and expect the format to be fine. You gotta ban King Calamity. And from all the comments I'm seeing on Facebook, a lot of people are saying the same thing. King Calamity is so strong of a card that, yes, it does lose to Super Poly, but if your opponent doesn't open with it or draw into it, you lose the ball game. Um, I've been seeing other builds where there's also a hand loop that you can play where you can loop the opponent for five cards out of their hand and it doesn't lose to Super Poly. And then, you know, of course, there's the build that I mentioned before where it can still lose to Super Poly because you have Baron on the field at the end of it. Um, but you can go Crimson Dragon, target uh, a level, I think a level 11. And then you can get out Majestic Star Dragon, which is an Omni Negate that tributes for cost and on resolution destroys all cards on the opponent's field. Yeah, like an Omni Negate that's also a board wipe, like, and it's 3,800 attack because it was garbage back in the day. You have to use Majestic Star Dragon to make it. But now with Crimson Dragon, you can just cheese it out more than you can some Munster cheese from the store. <laughs> All that to say, you got to have King Calamity banned, like, especially that since it's getting reprinted in the Jack Atlas structure deck and the Jack Atlas resonator stuff, at, at least at a glance, seems pretty good for, like, the Adventure Synchron stuff. It seems to me like... Uh, King Calamity is just going to be an amazing card moving forward until like the Synchron stuff gets hit or something. And the fact that yes, you can play the hand rip version to hit five cards, you still need to be able to hit King Calamity because in those situations where you don't quote, just open the out, woo, it, you have to have the card ban. Like it, it's dog water. Um, I also think, I've talked about this before, I feel like terraforming at some point will be banned because it basically gives every deck in the game four field spells because what archetype in Yu-Gi-Oh doesn't have a field spell at this point? Hell, Gate Guardian has a field spell. So that's just my little two cents on that. I saw that in a TCG player article a while back. Now limited, we have Sprite Blue, Fenrir, Unicorn, Branded Opening, Sprite Starter, and Skill Dream. Now, I think the Fenrir should just be banned because it's a one card rank seven exceed. Even though it can't search itself being at one, it's still just way too powerful and splashable of a card. I mean, I just showed that ridiculous 14th place stall deck uh, yesterday or the day before, and it was playing a small cash tier engine because Fenrir is just that good of a card. You know, even on its own, being able to be a target any face up card in the opponent's field, banish face down in eruption is really good. I mean, even when I'm playing Sprite purely, if I'm going against cash tira and i've already got you know my sprite carrot set up with like a monster negate and other stuff i'll just use the double cross i have set to take their fenrir and now i have another piece of interruption i can now use against them it's way too insane way too good i think it just needs to straight up be banned uh sprite blue at one is fine starter at one is fine um branded opening i was looking at some of the facebook comments on this one a lot of people are saying you need to hit branded fusion to one if you want to hit branded Here's the issue with that, though, when you think about it. How often do you lose to Branded after you ash their Branded Fusion? Like, seriously, like, even at three copies right now, if you ash the Branded Fusion, you're more than likely going to win unless, like, they just happen to have the Call by the Grave. And they're not going to play Cross Out unless they're bad, because Cross Out is inherently a... Uh, inconsistent card. I had to think of the word for a second. You know, no one's playing cross out in the TCG. That's more of an OCG thing because Maxi is a card. 
So, like, I feel like if you just hit Brain of Fusion of One, you basically just kill the deck. You know, at least having the other copies that are searchable off of Spriggan's Kid or Alubar, the deck can still at least function, even if it does lose to Ash on the Branded Fusion. And they have other ways to fuse, but Branded Fusion is still their bread and butter. I've had players use like Blazing Cartesia and all these other things. They fuse for like five minutes. And then near the end of their combo, they go Branded Fusion, I go Ash. And they're like, yep. Like even at the Boca Raton Regional, if you haven't seen that deck profile, I think you should go check it out, shameless plug. Uh, where the guy popped off, he made Sanctifier Dragon, Blazing Cartesia, Diffuse, make all this baby back BS. And he goes, Brain Diffusion, I go, Ash. And he's like, nice. That's the real pro move right there. And like, he just ended his turn. And I think all he had was Sanctifier. Yeah, that, that was the game where he did that. And then he tried to use Sanctifier Effect and I had drawn into Bell for turn. So I ghost belled his Sanctifier and his brain just 404 aired. It was really funny. Cool dude, but it was really funny. And Skill Drain at one, this is a hit to trap decks. I mean, so is Eradicator. But Skill Drain at one, I feel is at least going to happen eventually. You know, people like my dad want Skill Drain and Mystic Mind at three because he wants to be Degenerate AF. But Skill Drain at three is so strong of a card that if you're playing a trap heavy deck, then you can play it in your main deck even though it's bad when you go first because Skill Drain is that powerful of a card. Like just to show you how bad Master Duel players are because they can't deck build worth a damn because they throw in all these random crap cards that you shouldn't be playing in your main deck going first. Like, I've seen replays on YouTube and stuff where, like, people are main decking Skill Drain or Majesties or Vanity Fiend in their main deck. Like, my dad plays 8 Axis on Master Shits, and he's main decking things like Skill Drain and Vanity Fiend. And I'm like, you shouldn't be doing that because in the actual game when you play a, a freaking match, then you shouldn't need those cards because you've already beaten the opponent anyway when you OTK. But if you're playing something like Labyrinth or Eldritch where you're in a grind game, you're playing a grindy deck... Those skill drains can win you the game when you just have big beat sticks. Like, it's actually really nuts. Even if you're playing something like rank 8 Axis, you know, if you win game one because you went second, it, you can most likely assume the opponent's going to make you go first. So you side in your TC boost, skill drains, gozens, like whatever. And then, like, you can just sit on a bunch of big beat sticks, even if they don't really do anything. You just sit on skill drain, TC boo, rivalry, and, like, you're good, pimp. Like, it's a cheesy way to win, but it is a way to win. Um, it, it, yeah, skill drain needs to go to one. It's absolutely horrible. Semi limited, they have Gold Sark and D Shifter. So, Gold Sark, I feel like Gold Sark could actually be at three because Gold Sark at one, it was played in Branded when Branded first came out because they could banish the Mercurier and have plays. And if you hit Gold Sark to two, and then Branded opening in this case is at one then like Gold Sark can hit like a Mercurier to get you a search and like you could use it again to banish something else for like a Lubellion line, I guess. Other than that, it would maybe be using like Necroface Grimmaju crap, but those decks are garbage anyway, so like who cares? Um, yeah, Gold Sark at two, I, I think would be fine. I mean, you could do things like you could play a Gold Sark to banish a Cash Tier and then go Birth to bring it back. But like if you ban the Fenrir and you have Unicorn at one, does anyone really care at that point? Uh, and Shifter to two. So I feel like Shifter kind of suffers from the maxi syndrome in this regard because Shifter at three feels like it's it's pretty good. Shifter at two feels a bit luck sacky, but also kind of like, okay, you can justify playing or like siding it. And then Shifter at one just feels like Gamma. Like it's just a luck sack card. If you have it, you have it. And even then it's garbage at one because it's not named Max C. Um, like, yeah, Shifter at one just feels super sacky. Like, it, it's very similar to Gamma. I've only ran into Gamma once, and is that a guy at my locals who was playing at Dragon Link? And I'm like, yeah, you hit the one of, because I just can't draw as well as you, Pimp. Like, whatever. Um, yeah, Shifter at two just feels really awkward. I, uh, no. And then the three, and they have here free. I literally just realized that rhymes with three. Uh, Ancient Fairy Dragon, fine, it got the errata. Uh, Danger Suchi Noko. You're giving more power to Dark World decks, and you're also potentially giving power to Danger Tier Element if that were to become a thing. Um, but, like, I feel like that that's fine. Like, do we really care about Dark World? Like, it auto loses to Shifter and Droll. Like, who cares? Uh, Herald of Orange Light to three. You're throwing a bone to, I guess, a Shizu tier. Uh, and then you're throwing a bone to, like, all the Drytron players in the back of the room. Like, Drytron's really gotten the shaft when it comes to stuff like that. Gazelle to three makes sense because, like, it just got reprinted in uh, Soul Burning Volcano. And then you have Spellbook of Judgment to three. I thought it was already at three, but, yeah, it goes to three. And then Engage to three. I feel like Engage to three would honestly be fine at this point. Like, I, I don't feel like it's that big of a deal. 
But like, honestly, like this is a really solid list minus like not banning Fenrir and King Calamity. Like if this was our ban list, I would be really happy with it because any kind of change at this point would be great. Like, I know I sound like a broken record when I bring up things like King Calamity, whether it's like in the stall deck profile where I was like, yeah, you got to adjust this list because it auto loses to King Calamity. That's just because cards like King Calamity are so good. You know, you saw the same thing when we had VFD uh, in the meta back when Virtual World was the best deck and everybody was like, oh, well, does it lose to VFD? Well, then don't play the deck. It's garbage. Um, you know, with the Synchron stuff looping your hand, can you stop them from looping your hand for five with that deck? No, then don't play it. It's garbage. Which, at that point, it's like you either play Synchron or, like, I guess you play Tier. Well, even then, Omega banishes the stuff, and they play Trisha, they banish it too, so it doesn't even matter. But I feel like that this would be a solid list if we had to play under it. I just want a new ban list at this point. Like, there, there's a lot of things that I think Konami is going to need to hit to get rid of a lot of the de degeneracy. Don't be surprised if we have, like, a Scorched Earth ban list where, like, we see, like, six, seven cards get banned. I would love to see that. Like, they either need to reel in the Synchron stuff, which I don't think that they're going to do. Like, they're not going to ban Junk Speeder. That just kills the whole Synchron deck. I don't think that they're going to do that. If they do, then, like, everybody that invests in the Synchron stuff is going to just be crying because Revolution Synchrons are going to be, like, $5. Like, it's not going to be worth it. Um, God, th this just makes me want to balance all that more. But, guys, let me know what you think about this list. I think it's really interesting. I think it's pretty good. And, um, yeah, may maybe we'll need to, like, open up a Discord. I know people have been asking for that for a while, but maybe i open up a Discord where, like, we do, you know, custom ban list tournaments. I don't have the money to do product as prize support. We'd have to get, like, a donation pool going for that. Anyway, I'm just kind of thinking out loud, rambling at this point. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.